Hi, have you ever wondered what's the difference between a morning person, somebody who finds it easy to get up, and somebody who fights the process of getting on with the day in the morning? Well, this weekend I was working with some people studying NLP, that's Neuro Linguistic Programming, which is a way of identifying how come some people are good at one thing and other people aren't, and is there a way of working out what they do, teaching it to those people who want to learn that. And one of the topics that came up that was a good example is this difference between morning people and people who fight the alarm clock. And what I'm going to talk to you about now is something that I was asked to do, which is what is the difference between morning people and people who find it to get difficult to get up? And can I teach you how to get up early? Well, I'm going to tell you some skills that I learned by looking at and talking to these people and distinguishing using NLP technology. What is the difference? What are the main strategies? What I recommend you is take these strategies on, see what you can do with them. The problem you have when you're trying to work out how come people are good at something, like getting up early in the morning, is when you ask them, so how do you do that? They go, I, I don't know, I'm just a morning person. With NLP, you can start to unpack that. And after some questioning, some use of the NLP toolkit, we started to distinguish that there's one person who found it really easy to get up in the morning. And they, they didn't even set an alarm clock, they just woke up and got out of bed. And what they were doing was they were actually making a little voice in their head. And the voice said, get up, we've got things to do. That's good information, but we need a bit more information. This is a technology within NLP called the submodalities, which is what quality does this voice have? And the voice is here on her left, somewhere near her ear. And the voice is very bouncy, almost like an excited puppy saying, got to get up, things to do. And then it says, breakfast. And that is enough to get her out of bed. So that's the first thing. Test out that strategy. When you wake up in the morning, have a bouncy voice on the left-hand side of your head saying, got to get up, got things to do, breakfast, and see what happens as a result. Now the next thing we did then, of course, was talk to our captive audience of people, and they were the majority, found it much more difficult to get up in the morning. We said, so what do you do? And they did not do that at all. They did something very different. They said, and we talked to three of them, they said, I have a real conflict in the morning. I have a voice that says, instead of got to get up, a voice that says, I have to get up. I need to get up. I should get up. That's their leading voice that's telling them that they need to get up. But if we look at the qualities, the submodalities of that voice, that voice is sighing. That voice is not very hopeful. It's going to make it happen. That voice is quite low. I should get up. I should, I should, I should. It's not very convincing. They also have a conflict because they also have another voice that goes, oh, just a few more minutes. And what we find is these people set their alarm, let's say they need to get up at 8 o'clock, then they set their alarm at 7 o'clock or 7.30 because they know it's going to take them a certain amount of time to have this internal dialogue. And what they all recognised was the internal dialogue started between the voice saying, should get up, you need to get up. And the other voice going, but I, but I need to sleep, I need a bit longer, surely I can have a bit longer. So warm and comfortable. And as time got on, that conflict would escalate. And the voice that said, no, you need to get up, would get more strong and more driving. And they recognised that somewhere about here, the conversation would be finished and then they'd drag themselves out of bed. One of the interesting things they were doing here is they're demonstrating time. They're saying, this is where the alarm clock goes, and then I have this conversation between these two voices, and eventually one voice dominates at this point. Check inside if you're one of those people who finds it difficult to get up in the morning. Your chances are you've got some kind of internal conversation. And at some point along a time continuum, timeline, you'll have a sense, this is where it finishes. And there's two things you can do. One is you could just jump in the morning straight to that point. Imagine what it's like to be here having had that conversation. So use your existing strategy, but be there already. The half an hour or however long it is has elapsed. Experience what that conversation is, and that will get you out of bed. But it's not a very motivating strategy. That's quite a pushing, guilt-ridden strategy. Instead, I'd try the first one we talked about. Hearing the voice here saying, got to get up, got things to do. Also, what they tended to do is have a little plan of these things they were excited about. I've got this to do and this to do. And then, breakfast. So try that out and see what you can do using these skills, these strategies, 
check them out, change them around, because NLP says, this is what we found, but see what works for you, and see what you can do in becoming a morning person.